Welcome to Law Flip. Welcome, Arian. Hey, thanks okay. for having me. I am Benji Smith, and I'm joined by my esteemed, wonderful, incredible producer, Arian Tabibian. What up? Hey. Um, so today we're going to talk about Tucker's new weird gay documentary that's like trying not to be gay so much that it turns out to I, be... I love, I love the word they use, homoerotic. <laughs> yeah. Um, surprise birthday parties, Marjorie Taylor Greene, harassment at abortion clinics, math indoctrination, and Alex Jones. As always, it's going to be a fun episode. Look, if you need any legal help whatsoever, call us 1-833-LAWFLIP. Follow us on all the social media uh, places. Spo follow we have got some wild stuff on TikTok, at LAWFLIP. Um, and then if you or anybody you know is a lawyer that likes to easily refer business or pretty much do anything as a lawyer in a new way, you want to go on to lawflip.com, www.lawflip.com. It's a referral network on uh, the internets that you want to check out. Let's get into it. Lawflip, lawflip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law flip, law flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Now we're lost. Frank Ocean is the shit, man. Yeah, he is. We're back, baby. We're back. How was, how was your trip? I'm tired. I need you to basically run this whole episode, talk up a storm, and let me bounce out of here. It was great. Just like, you know, Costa Rica is unbelievable. It, you, you, the, the problem with the vacations, right? Any sort of vacations is coming back. So, you know, the journey back was like three hour drive, then wait in the airport for three hours, then a four hour flight. And you, you had to stop over in Mexico City and wait like three or four hours. You almost missed a second flight. Um, and then, you know, the new thing at LAX, you can't just get picked unless you get like an Uber like i think it's a black whatever for 170 dollars or something right you have to like either walk 20 minutes or to get a on shuttle. the shuttle right you get there and then it's passover we get back we got to get prepared for passover right it's just so it's a bitch it's a little <laughs> bit of a bitch the traveling but <laughs> it was amazing while was amazing. you were there it was amazing and i don't want to sound like i'm very much mr positivity but like did it happen on a whim? Because like I didn't know yeah. you were going on this trip until you went on this it trip. It hundred percent happened on a whim. We were supposed to go to trial like starting two days ago. Okay. And like, you know, a week or so prior, it got continued and um we were like, screw it, let's go. And so I was like a really I'm I'm like the person that booked flights six months, twelve months in advance. Like I love planning things out super crazy. But this was just really quick, and we got hooked up with like this amazing guy who in Costa Rica who like basically helped us get everything set up. So it was great. It was great. Good. Um, another thing that happened while we were away was, you know, we've been trying to make like viral TikToks, right? But uh, apparently, I was in somebody else's viral TikTok. Really? And yes. So Who, whose viral TikTok were you in? Um, well, so I start like I'm I'm away and I start getting I think it was like the past it's been the past like five, six days that I've been getting tons of text messages across the world from people saying, like, dude, is this you? Is this you? This is you. This is crazy. So there's a guy named Rice Man or something that basically goes to do you know who this guy Rice Man? Right, is? is is it that guy who goes to the gas stations? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So basically there's a gas station that's the most expensive gas station, I think, in the country or the world. It's on, I don't know, it's on like La Cienega or something. It's so, third in La Cienega, or Beverly yes, in La Cienega. Yes. Right, right by uh, that CVS and that uh, hotel and yes. Beverly Center, right that's on that exactly corner. exactly where right. it is. Okay, so, you know, we're driving by there a couple weeks ago and uh, with my girl and the kids and like driving my Tesla, which... There's a whole story in itself why I have a Tesla, but um, I'm not like a crazy like Tesla electric per electric car person, but like I got a I got a Tesla, so nice. I'm driving it, 
And I have a question, a little, little tangent here. Yeah. How are you charging it? Do you have a charger at no, home? Is it a fast it's, it's one? Honestly, like, what, like, what's the deal? everybody's point? It's a miserable process right now because the pro, like, right now, I don't have like the strong Tesla charger. Right, you at don't home. like so. So it's like what twenty four hours yeah, to get a full charge or something off, like that. It's not, it's not. It's not a real solution. So what happens is basically once a week, I'll find my way to a supercharger. It takes an hour. It charges you up. Right. That's, the, that's what are you doing at the station while you're there? I mean, honestly, I like I like I can do everything that I do for work and life in my phone. So like, it's not a crazy thing for me. Um, and I have the flexibility to do that. Right. right. So I just I work. I do okay. some version of work or something there. Makes sense. So you're charging um, or, by once or a week. I'll grab a taco. Of course, I'm not doing that during Passover because I'm keeping it as strict as I ever. Corn have. tortilla, but also you're not just you're just keeping it completely K I'm for P. Like, you're staying at home. I'm not making the I commitment. I respect that. I'm not making the commitment, but I have been doing it. Okay, so anyway, this this TikTok. So what happens is, like I I always I'm always up for a good time. I'm always sure. up for a good time. I'm always up to answer answer some questions. So this guy is like has his camera and his microphone and he's asking people questions. I'm like, hey, like, we'll answer questions. He runs over to the car, asks me like, what do you think about these gas prices? I'm like, buy an electron, elect first, of all, I, first I said electronic car, like an idiot. <laughs> Then I said, buy electric. Don't buy gas, buy electric. Then my son, who doesn't see the gas price, says $5 because he heard somebody say $5. $5, that's a ripoff. And so half the com, like this is a video that's gotten, I think, 2 million views at this point. Okay. And like when it comes to me, here are the comments about me. Moron. Uh, like kind of like my cousin said that it was like my kind of like my Maria Antoinette like let them eat cake moment like let them eat cake moment like right. very like you know like ad audacious of me to be tell people to buy you know electric cars sure. and everybody's like I can't afford gas and you're telling me to buy a, a expensive electric car and also that my son's like you know half the people are like my son's so smart he's a man he's listening to that. <laughs> half of them are like oh my god like he got the number wrong of the gas oh my like, fucking god <laughs> and then and then another contingent of the people are saying that and i've gotten this a lot for the past few years i don't i don't know why i, I don't really know anything about this dj other than his name and i've looked him up a few times dylan dylan francis people think apparently i look like dylan francis with the dylan. beard i see it Without right now, you're clean really. shaven for the people who are listening. You're clean shaven right now. Okay. So like you don't you don't look like him like at all right now. Okay. But when you have the beard, you yeah. guys have like the same oval face. I totally see it. Okay. Totally. Well, he's not bad looking, so I'll take it. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. So do you know what is also uh, kind of funny? Um, talk, do you think that traditional masculinity is still a thing today? traditional mask it's for sure still a thing yeah absolutely. Well, and what, like, like do you feel don't you feel like do you, you hear a lot about like the feminization of men like the, like that like men has be, have become like just i'll like, tell you a story i'll okay. tell you a story Je it was i think it was like end of december my my girlfriend's birthday is january 1st um end of december we were like planning on going on like a little new year's like kiana's birthday uh, just like weekend down at Chapman with like all our friends. Yeah. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I want to get my nails done for the first time. Ooh. So I painted my nails yellow with uh, smiley faces on them. Very MAGA of you. Um, And just like the people in my family who came after me, like they hated it. They hated it. How like, many people, how many people <laughs> called you? The derogatory term for gay people. Oh, dude, my my, <laughs> I really shouldn't say this story. <laughs> I, <laughs> I so so I call my mom. I'm like, so I send my mom a photo, right? Oh, let's try to save her. Let's try to save her. <laughs> no, I send my mom a photo. <laughs> okay. I thought I had the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and and she goes and and she's like, oh, like so pretty, thinking it's Kiana, thinking ah! it's Kiana's fingers. <laughs> And then I call her and I show her and she's like, huh? And then she got a little heated and we got a little in something. But it was it was just so incredible. And my mom, obviously, like she like made some jokes and then she was like totally with it after. But like I did have extended family who came after me. They're like, yeah. this is so gay. This is like so homosexual. Why are you doing this? Like, like, do you like men? Like you're right. so successful. This is so feminine, like whatever, whatever, whatever. And like personally, I thought of it like I got my fucking nails done. Like, like I like women. I'm confident that I like women. 
I'm confident that I have a dick and I'm a man. Like, that's all I really need. Like, I'm I'm happy with myself. Like, Not what do you care? What do you care? Not according yeah. to Tucker Carlson. So Tucker Carlson says that, you know, masculinity is disappearing. And he made a documentary about it, but it didn't turn out that well for him. So some have mocked this homoerotic nature of a trailer for his. He has like this new documentary about testosterone levels. And if you look at the teaser online, we'll show a clip of this. Like, it's like a basically like one guy is like having his testicles like getting charged by like what looks to be like a Tesla charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like standing in front of this thing. There's like light coming out of it. Standing butt naked with his hands out like this. Yeah, really sketchy. And they see really, like really the guys weird. are like wrestling. They're chopping wood. They're firing guns. And at one point, like this naked guy is getting his like penis charged. And it's like. These guys, they're so worried about looking gay or, you know, effeminate. This is the gay, like, I talked to my gay friend yesterday. He said this is one of the gayest things he's ever seen. Right. Like, <laughs> this is yeah. an infomercial for this documentary. <laughs> so it's just like, this is the typical, like, I'm not going to say Republican thing, but this is like the hypocrisy. When you cry too loud, you know, what is that? What is that? What's that? Uh, that famous quote, like the Shakespearean type quote, like th dust protest too much. Like, I don't know. No, you, yeah, you and I yeah. don't read. So, <laughs> 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 but, but uh, too much protesting is a concern. And so um, this is just like further along with that. Yeah. It, it, like, like, if you haven't watched the video, you should definitely should go watch the video because yeah. it's like a 40 second little clip that like we saw on Twitter. Uh, I, I checked it out right before we started the episode and like like you watch it and you're like, like, who is this video for? <laughs> like, like who, like, who is this for? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's be real men and watch this video. Yeah. And it's like, and it was like, there was like a silhouette of this guy drinking this water. Come on, baby. Was like, show, me, show me some water drinking. Show me some chip yeah. and some wood, baby. Come what on. was going on? Did not at all understand it, but like, whatever, you know, uh, like, <sighs> <laughs> Ariane, tell me how you would feel if I surprised you on your birthday with a little bit of a party. You know, you know, back in 2020, yeah. right before the pandemic, uh -huh. you guys got me an ice cream cake at the Smith and Benowitz oh, really? office. Um, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I ate half that ice cream cake. It was a Ben and Jerry's Oreo ice cream cake. Uh, so nice. Uh, yeah, it was like the whole team, Vanessa, Aaron, Michelle, uh, you and Lewis all came out and I got a little, got a little surprise birthday cake. It's a good thing you were delighted. Cause if you weren't, you could have made $450,000. <laughs> See so. now, now I know, now I know. Yeah. So this guy in Kentucky basically didn't want to have the, he didn't want to have his birthday celebrated. He made it clear. He doesn't want to have his birthday celebrated and for, for mental health reasons, for mental health right. reasons, he didn't want the attention type of thing. I mean, I mean, like, I, I don't want to say like, oh, like he didn't want any attention. Like it was it was a serious medical issue, mental health issue. He had anxiety. He yes. struggles with anxiety. Yes. And he said that he does not feel comfortable having a birthday party because it'll peak, in, peak his anxiety and he doesn't think he could like work productively. Fair after enough. That. So that's very so that's, fair. That's what it was. And the, the employer supposedly like literally just forgot his wishes and like did the birthday anyway. He lets them know that he's like upset about it. He goes out to his car. He's trying breathing exercises. The poor guy, like literally is, right. like, having suffering. a panic attack. Yeah, he's having right. a panic attack. He lets them know. They start like basically going back at him like, what, why are you trying to take away joy of us like celebrating you? It's like, first of all, who is that obsessed with celebrating other people's birthdays? Right. It's, it's like you're taking away my joy. It's I feel like if like, you're if you're at an office, like with an office job and like just every day is just nine to five bullshit. True. A birthday is a pretty exciting. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually like the most exciting time of the year. A five minute good. paid break to like eat some cake. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah, need yeah. it. They need it. That's fair. So anyway, yeah. So so he's interfering with their break. So ultimately, he lets them know like this is really tough for him. And I think he's like they, they thought that he was going to get like physical or violent, but like he was just expressing his frustration and. Long story short is they fire him for the events of the, of the last week, which we're referring to him getting upset about his birthday. and Unlawful he, discrimination yeah, sounds like. Wrong, yeah, it's a wrongful termination. That's a case that we, like, that's, it's not, I mean, I haven't done the birthday cake, birthday celebration <laughs> case yet, but that's the type of case we handle all the time where, like, you express, um, uh, you know, some sort of 
mental or physical disability or or challenge and it's ignored and then you get retaliated against for complaining about it right so he got four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's a shit ton of money it's a shit ton of money but like it's also like you know that 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 happening to you and like he didn't he wasn't asking for that he just wanted his freaking job you know and right. he wanted to continue his job and th this changes his career tra trajectory I, I don't know if that's necessarily fair though like like i i have i i struggle with anxiety a little bit yeah um um i haven't had that many panic attacks in my life i probably had one or two they suck you feel like you're having a heart attack you feel yeah. like you're dying I don't know one panic attack constitutes me making $500,000. It's not that. First of all, uh, God bless the attorney for getting that 450 grand. You, you, you think it's fair? You think that much money is fair? No, because it's not about the panic attack. He got fired. Sure, okay. Right? So if he just had a panic attack, no. One panic attack, no. Nobody, nobody, no, that's not the story. The story is he gets a panic attack. He complains about it. They retaliate against him. He complains about them retaliating against him. They fire him. Okay. Still though, five hundred thousand dollars. You know what? That's fair. You think that's fair? I there's 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 nothing in the story that leads me to think that it's not fair. Okay, but here so here's my counter. There are other people who like mm -hmm. who will get fucked up far more yeah. in some other sense. And then they only get like a hundred G's Ariana, or two hundred G's. Cases where I I, I don't take cases that have no merit, but like I'll have cases that are like on the edges, right? Sometimes you're like, ah, oh, I believe in this, but like it's kind of weak, but I understand where my client's coming from. Let me see what I can do. You'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then I'll have a client, and this is a settlement, of course. They don't have a client who has an incredible case and you are forced to go to trial because the employer is just unreasonable and they won't offer a penny. So there's not like, there's, remember, we've talked about this. There's who who decides the money? Who decides how it's much a you're negotiation. getting? No, a negotiation. In trial, the judge oh, picks? Oh, in trial, it's, the, it's a jury. It's a jury or a judge. The jury or the judge. Yeah, so you have to, there's two ways that money changes hands. Okay. Two ways. One is if a jury or a judge awards it, some people will say that's like two ways in itself, but that's like one way is if a judge or a jury does it. So you can call it one way or two ways, judge, jury. The other way is if the parties voluntarily agree. Right. And that's a that's a settlement. That's a settlement. Okay. So in in, in most cases settle, right? Very okay. few cases go to trial. It's just the nature of the beast. It costs so much money to go to trial. Um, and so, you know, does it sound like a lot on yeah, like it, it just because it's like the story of it, like the whole birthday aspect of it, like is kind of like screams off the page. But like, no, it's a, he got retaliated against for reporting a medical condition. So okay. you've cool convinced me. It. I'm cool with it. That's you fair. You don't need to be convinced. I get it. But but do you uh, just a really quick brief update on our favorite uh, M MTG Marjorie Taylor Greene? Um, she is trying to run again. She's trying to run for office again in Georgia. Do you think she should be allowed to run again? Do I think she should be allowed to run again? I mean, she did kind of like lean into that insurrection a little bit hard. Oh, she loves an insurrection. But she, but like if if the problem with her leaving is who's going to represent the Karens if she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch like, is crazy. Yeah, she is really crazy. But she look, she's in there's a new lawsuit that's trying to disqualify her from re-election um, for basically taking part in uh, like a group of Georgia voters are seeking to have her disqualified based on a provision in the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution originally designed to prevent former Confederates from holding office after the Civil War. It's really like it's nice incredible irony. when you have to use a law like that. Yeah. To like to like prevent somebody from running for Here's office. Here's the thing, like. Uh, just from reading that, you're like, okay, there's no chances this type of lawsuit to keep her off the ballot is going to succeed. But what the judge just ruled a couple of days ago was that it can at least temporarily move forward. And then she has to show up in court this Friday and answer questions under penalty of perjury. And what I want people to understand is, is that when you're going about life and you're gaslighting people and your personal life or your professional life, as many people do, I have people in my life, in my personal and professional life, they just say things that aren't backed up by the truth. And there's not really, like, there's not that much you can do, right? Because it's kind of like, all right, well, I know you're lying. This is BS. 
but it's a different thing when you're in court. Now, do people lie under oath? Yes, but it's a little bit different. It just, it just, it's just a little bit different when you're either in a deposition right. or you got a skin in the game a little bit more. Yeah, you have a judge there saying, you know, there's there there are judges that will step in and say, stop that nonsense. Answer the question, you know, answer the question, yes or no. Right. You know, imagine in your personal life where you could, could uh, I don't like so she's showing up as when she's testifying, could you be held in like contempt yeah. for like bullshitting yeah. like that? Yeah, if you like ref if you yeah, in a civil case, if you refuse to obey a court's orders, they can hold you in contempt. It's very rare. Right. Right. Even in the Alex Jones case, which we'll talk a little bit about later, like it's very rare that judges actually do it. You saw it in My Cousin Vinny, right? I don't know if you Oh, know, yeah, yeah. You know. My Cousin Vinny is actually one of my favorite movies it's of all time. I've seen it like 110 times. I think oh, I'm blanking. Help me with her name. Oh, uh, uh, Marissa Tomei. She, that is one of the best performances. She, yeah. everybody shits on her for getting that Oscar. I think she deserved that Oscar. Everybody, everybody in that movie deserved an Oscar. It was incredible. Oh, um, I love that movie. But um, yeah, there's no guarantee she'll get disqualified. But you know, fascist insurrectionist Karen shouldn't be allowed to run for office. But I think I here, also here's my like, take. Like, like it, it's a slippery slope. Let her run. Let her like ew. exactly. Like my take is is like as much as I'm like okay, well, if the suit has merit, then like, yeah, absolutely use this law, prevent her from running. I think on the flip side though, that could ha like hurt Dems because it's like, you also want a vote that is a referendum on her. Yeah. And like, you want to see that decision made in the ballot box Yeah, because I think, I think it goes a little further in like, in putting a stop to that movement that than like to be what blocking I them out in court, you that know? That used to be what I thought. And like, okay, it's there, it's just like the Washington elite. It's like, it's like the powers are taking away the, instead of like taking away from the voters. The problem is that like, like what Trump did and what MAGA world has done is they've taken away faith in voting. So even if you had her lose a vote, it's like a fake vote. Right. You know, so it's okay. Tough. Anyway, how do you feel about women being harassed at abortion clinics? Dude, this shit pisses me off. Why? And I mean, like, all right, let me, let me hold up, full stop. Let me say this first. Okay. Okay. We are two straight white men. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's actually my friend is going to love that because he watches <laughs> these podcasts and he always makes jokes and he's going <laughs> to eat that up. Um, we are two straight white men. One of us possibly by, uh, uh, and like, and like how much can we be talking about abortion with any authority? Like not, no, not, not much. I don't want to talk but about like, abortion, but, but like, wanna... you know, I just want to preface this okay. with that. Okay. But, okay. But, and, and, and though moving forward, yes. I think it's, I think it's such bullshit. I think like, I think like you, you see it here, uh, not so much in California, but like I see TikToks of this shit like yeah. a couple times a week yeah. of like these people who are like, like they wear vests and they have like these umbrellas and they literally have to escort people from their cars yeah. into the facility. Half these people aren't even getting abortions. They're like going in there to get birth control or some other procedure. And like they're being literally abused by these people standing on the street. It's disgusting. Those people have no life. Also, what are you fucking doing there every day? Do you not have something to do with your fucking life? And it's like, and it's just like, it's all bullshit. And I'm very excited to see what's happening here. Um, though it's not the US. Uh, I love, I love that, that somebody's making it. Illegal. I love that rant. Like, like I, yeah, like basically like they're not allowed to do it anymore in Spain. Supposedly there's a, there's a measure that states that anybody trying to impede a woman from exercising her right to voluntary interrupt uh, pregnancy through bothersome, offensive, intimidating, or threatening acts faces prosecution. The ban also applies to the harassment or intimidation of health staff at abortion clinics. So this doesn't apply. This should apply in the U.S., but it doesn't. I mean, right. like, this is just, you're basically canceling, you know, they're so against cancel culture. You're canceling women from having the right to choose, which is legal. It is legal to have an abortion. So at least right now it is. <laughs> probably not for long in the u.s yeah 
Speaking of insanity, uh, did you think your books were trying to, your math books were trying to indoctrinate you? I think you? my math books were trying to make me kill myself, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I don't think they were trying to. Like Florida is basically, every day there's a new social wedge issue that Ron DeSantis, like you almost like know that he's. Has gonna, this fucker announced his run for president yet? Because he, he just needs to get on the road and get busy with that shit because like. Every oh my fucking day, god! He does a press conference on another like social wedge issue. So the new issue is dozens of math textbooks were rejected by the Florida Department of Education after officials said their publishers were attempting to indoct indoctrinate students. The department states forty one percent of the submitted textbooks include references to critical race theory, Common Core, and social emotional learning. Social emotional learning. Yeah, oh my fucking, what are we going to do? <laughs> Social <laughs> emotional learning. God forbid they understand like, their feelings. Did, like, did something happen in the last like two weeks where like all public, like every school official and every like publisher of like educational materials changed dramatically to the point where like people are coming out and going crazy. And then, this? and then we asked them, we're like, right, can you show us like what's, what's wrong in these textbooks? And then they Nothing. say, no, they say, no. Yeah, Bullshit. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one. Like, what? What is it? Like in a math book, instead of it saying like five minus four, it's like five brown boys minus three. Like, what? What? What could be indoctrination in a math book? I don't get it. Um, anyway, maybe this is their attempt to make their people more stupid so they keep voting Republican. I don't know. Um, okay, so on to our favorite, the sicko Alex Jones. He's in so much trouble right now. He just got ordered to pay, I think another million dollars in fees for um, another one of these Sandy Hook related cases. So a judge has ordered Alex Jones and his companies to pay $1 million in legal fees to the parents of two slain Sandy Hook children and a Norwalk native falsely accusing accused of being the shooter in a, a Florida high school massacre. He's just like the, he he was wildly accusing different people of being- So hold shooter. on, so hold on. One minute he was saying it, it was fake and then one minute yeah, he was blaming like, a shooter. Because any, these conspiracy theories, they they, they don't, you don't need Fuck to this guy. actually- do you, do you think we'll, he'll ever, in, no jail time for this guy, huh? It's just paying shitloads of money. It's like with OJ, with other people, usually they can't stop. Who's his lawyer? Like what fuck is, is taking on know, his I case? I don't even know who his lawyers are, but like he's got to be running out of money because that's, that's, that's you know, like people complain about the legal system but like in a situation like him, it's really nice to see him getting crushed in the legal system. Like it's really nice to see him having to rack up the legal bills, get judgments against him. You know, he's trying to pull maneuvers and move money out of the country. And I just saw a report of him supposedly moving $18 million out of, I, first of all, the fact that this guy has $18 yeah, million how the fuck is this guy? makes me question everything about life. <laughs> Why does Alex Jones have $18 million? It's unbelievable. But um, look, it's, 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 any money awarded against him in the form of a judgment is happy for me. It's good news. It's good not, news. Not only that, I think I think there is like a lot of merit in this case holistically for for, for those parents, for those yeah. parents who had kids yeah. like I can't slain. Like it's it's just it's just impossible to to wrap your head around. Anyway, we are moving on to legal tip. If you smoke weed, don't talk about it at work. Even though marijuana is legal in California, your employer can still fire you for marijuana use. What exactly are your rights in California if you suffer from anxiety, stress, and other similar disorders or conditions? So if you suffer from any of these conditions, anxiety or anything like that, you are entitled to what are called reasonable accommodations. What does that mean? It means that your job is required to make it reasonable for you to work as long as you can perform the essential job functions they need to accommodate you and it's a it's and if and if even if you don't bring it to your employer they actually have a duty if it is if they can perceive that you have that disability they actually have a duty to come and actually make sure that you get a reasonable accommodation and let's say you ask for a reasonable accommodation and they refuse they have to engage in what is called the interactive good faith process where they work with you to try to figure it out, whether it's they ask you what you need, you go to your doctor, you you figure out what type of limitations you have, and you work together. If you don't have uh, an employer that's working with you to to work through your accommodations, 
give us a call, 1-833-LAWFLIP. We're Smith Law, an employment, personal injury, and class action law firm. Let's go. Okay, Ariane, it was wonderful catching up with you. Yeah, great episode. Got yeah. to talk some news. Got to have a little fun. Get Got to hear about your trip. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. So anyway, you're the best. Smoochies. We're going to keep on keeping on with Passover. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next we'll week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, Laughlin.